baking in the oven, I thought I would get on with making the curd that's going to go into the meringue pie. I've got a bowl here and I've got 80 grams of caster sugar and one and a half tablespoons of corn flour measured out. I've also got a pan with a bit of water in the bottom of it uh, on the boil, which needs turning down because it's nearly ready to go. And um, we're going to use that to slowly cook the curd. Uh, first of all, I've got my blood oranges and I've got my microplaner here and I'm going to collect the zest of two of the blood oranges to put in my curd. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can use the sort of fine bit of, the, of a grater, if you've got a grater. Just try and only get the surface. Um, wash your oranges beforehand, make sure they're not waxed as well. Try not to go down too deep into the white pith. If you like your curd more zesty, then do more oranges. Um, and it's entirely up to you. So I just think it's gonna add some really nice color into the curd. Some people add it just for the flavor whilst it's cooking and then sieve it. So you've got a really smooth, fine curd. It's entirely up to you. Uh, you're the one that's going to be eating it, so go for it, whichever, whatever you want. So there we go. Um, excellent. Right. Wash that later. And then I need to collect about 220. How much do I need to collect? 250, sorry, just check my recipe. Uh, 250 millilitres of the juice from your blood oranges and um, as you can see they are this amazing sort of orangey red juicy colour uh, which I think is going to be perfect to represent Venus and our pies later on. Um, they smell absolutely amazing, they smell like oranges um, so you'll really enjoy this bit when you're squeezing them all out. So there we go. If you don't have enough blood oranges to bring this up to 250 millilitres, you can just add in a little bit of cold water to bring it up. So don't worry too much about that you'll still get the flavour as well. We're also gonna add a little bit of lemon juice uh, into it, just to add a bit more tartness, because the meringue is gonna be quite sweet, and the pastry's got some sugar in as well, so that's a sweet pastry. So you need that acidity to balance out the flavours and blood oranges are just a bit more sweeter than lemons are. So we're gonna add just a little bit of lemon juice in, just to try and help balance the flavors of the pie. Because that is the idea behind Sci Recipes, is that we're making stuff that looks sciencey and that's fun, that we can share with our friends and family and learn some really cool things about but I also want them to taste good. So I try and not compromise on the flavor too much over its scientific accuracy at the end of the day. So what are we at? almost at 200 mils, so keep on going with this. How long? The pastry's got five minutes, so get this quickly so we can get this done quickly so we can then take our pastry out uh, and remove the baking beans. So if you're enjoying baking along with me, um, leave a comment, let me know, send me a message. Um, 
I love seeing your pictures of bakes at home, so go send me pictures or go onto my Facebook page. Uh, it's under Sci Recipes. And share, share your bakes. Let me know which one's your favorite. The plan is uh, to do some savory pies as well. So no, I'm gonna do all nine planets. I've been challenged, but I'm gonna do a mixture of sweet and savory. So if, if sweet pastry is not your thing, then come back later on in the series and I'll share some savory planets with you as well. All right, we're almost at 2.50, so I think that'll do. Um, I did buy extra oranges because I wasn't sure how long or how much juice I'd get from an orange. But there we go, that was perfect. So I think that was four oranges in total. There we go. Right, so very quickly, I don't want my pastry, I've got five minutes, so I've got enough time to do this. So in my mixture here with my rind, uh, rind, sugar and corn flour. I'm going to add 75 mils of lemon juice. Just whisk that in. So it's got corn flour in this mixture because it's going to help us thicken the curd later on to set. If you're making curd that's just going to use in breakfast on your toast and things, don't add corn flour, but because we're using this in a pie, it's just gonna help stabilize the curd uh, later on. But because it's corn flour, you wanna make sure that the liquid you're adding is cold first, and then we're gonna heat it up to thicken it. And then to that lemon juice, we're gonna add our 250 mils of blood orange juice as well. So quickly give that a whisk. What you need to do is you're going to put this on your pan of simmering water. Uh, you don't want it boiling. You also don't want the water surface touching the bottom of your glass bowl. And you're going to keep on whisking. You slowly heat this up and it's going to thicken over time. Make sure you keep on whisking so you don't get lumps in it. If you do get lumps, don't worry about it. I'll show you a way later on that can help you with that. Anyway, come back to us in a minute and we'll start getting this done and we'll get the pastry out of the oven and check on the baked beans. Baked beans? <laughs> the baking beans. And we're gonna remove those from the pastry. So the buzzer went off for the pastry just as I was putting the mixture for the curd on the pan. You can just sort of see it behind me. It's on the hob here. And I uh, just whisk it and leave it for a little while so I can remove the baking beans from the pastry. So grab the corners, best you can, leaving one open. A bit difficult in the oven gloves, but the oven gloves are important because it's very hot and you don't want to burn your hands. And then just pour your beans. Right, and this will need to go back in the oven for about five or 10 minutes just to bake the surface over. And we can carry on making our curd mixture whilst that's happening. The curd mixture heating up on the hob and I've got the pastry finishing off the blind baking in the oven. So very quickly, I'm gonna do the next stage of the curd and that's gonna be separating our eggs. You're gonna need four large eggs and we're going to use the egg whites for the meringue topping later on and we're going to use the egg yolks to thicken up the curd in the next stage. I've got my bowl out ready. I'm going to use my mixer um, to whisk my egg whites up. So I've got my bowl out ready to collect the egg whites and I've just got a little bowl to collect the egg yolks. And I'm very quickly just going to break and separate the four eggs that I need. I did not want to play. Um, I use the eggshells and I just squidge them around like this uh, and put them 
in the bowl. There are gadgets you can buy that help you separate the eggs. Uh, what you don't want is any egg yolk getting into your egg white mixture. So if you start to see the egg yolk break, just put it straight into your bowl for later on. It doesn't matter if there's a few bits of egg white into your curd mixture. As I was sort of preparing or investigating the best way to make this recipe, I was looking at different ways of making the curd mixture. And there are lots of schools of thought about, do you make curd with all the egg, just egg whites, just the yolk? And there's a lot of opinions out there. I think if you want a runnier curd, you're gonna use all the egg. So there are some recipes out there that will use like three egg yolks and then three whole eggs, uh, whichever one you want. But because this recipe, we want our curd to be quite firm and set, I've only used egg yolks and it's great because we're using all the egg up so you won't have any egg left over at the end of this recipe to try and work out what to do with it. So leave the egg yolks to one side, we're going to use those in a second. The egg whites I'd cover up if you can and just put in the fridge and keep them fresh and we'll make our meringue later on. So my pastry is finished baking and I've taken it out of the oven and I've just got it on the side there to cool. I've also taken my curd mixture off the hob and transferred it to a jug but I've left the hob on because we're going to need that to carry on making the curd mixture. I've also turned the oven down to 140 degrees C so do this immediately as soon as the pastry is out because that's the temperature we're going to cook the meringue at and you don't want the oven too hot when that meringue mixture goes back in. We'll carry on making our curd. So I've just taken this out. This is too hot to immediately add eggs to. If we added it straight away, you'd start cooking the eggs. So what I've done, I've transferred it to a jug. I'm gonna put the eggs into our bowl. Just whisk them up a little bit just to break all the yolks and get them ready. And then I'm going to slowly just pour a little bit of mixture in and keep on whisking. And this should just help our eggs come together, but we don't want to cook them. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to get scrambled eggs. So by doing it, if you'd done it the other way around, you'd have just got a scrambled egg mixture within your curd. But by doing this way, we slowly bring the temperature of our egg mixture up to that of the curd mixture that's already hot. Speaking of heat, I'll go back to my Venus facts now. It is the planet with the hottest surface temperature in our solar system. So uh, quite appropriate and apt at the moment for this fun fact. Um, another fun fact about Venus, uh, it's day is longer than its year so its year is about 224 days so it takes 224 I should say 224 earth days to make one rotation around the Sun but it has really slow rotation on its axis so the earth takes about 24 hours to rotate on its axis um, the Venus, sorry, the Venus, <laughs> Venus, the planet, takes 243 days to orbit. It's got a ridiculously slow orbit uh, rotation speed. So it also means it's quite spherical. So Earth bulges out at the equator because of the speed it rotates on the axis. But because Venus rotates so slowly, it's almost spherical in nature. So there you go. 